<laughs> in your <laughs> diaper. Uh, if you drink less fluid, yeah. you will leak less urine. What? Bam. No. No way. In this video, we're going to be talking about approach to STI testing in men who have sex with men. We're going to talk about urinary incontinence in the elderly, part two. And holy guacamole, you are not going to believe this article about <laughs> avocados and IUDs. I, I cannot wait to I can't wait. We are going to smash that one. <laughs> like a good avocado article. So here, let's, throw, let's do something a little bit different today. We always talk about the cover first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the very first sentence, the very first sentence from the deputy editor, Sarah Fraser. I'm not going to read it in French. I'm going to turn the page here. And then you got to guess what the main topic is. Okay. And just dive right in. Don't wait. Okay. If you are reading this editorial in print, the journal might seem a bit thicker than usual. This article is about access to sexual health care. So our first article is about men who have sex with men testing for sexually transmitted infections. So we're getting more and more, more complications with sexually transmitted infections. You have to broaden your differential. We've seen MPOX, formerly known as monkeypox. So now it's just MPOX, just a vernacular change there. And nice article lists everything in our differential diagnosis considerations for male patients described. So what's your takeaway from there? What's your big one that jumped out at you? It's different. It's absolutely different. So I remember in med school, we were taught, you know, your patient comes in for STI testing, you're going to get your HIV. Hepatitis, 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 your syphilis, which is, a, which is an island chain <laughs> off the coast of uh, Vanuatu. Okay, I hepatitis. wouldn't believe you because my <laughs> geography is terrible. Uh, so HIV, syphilis, hepatitis, and chlamydia and gonorrhea, and that's it. And that is extremely outdated, especially in this higher risk population. So three things you want to be thinking about: shigellosis, shigellosis, another great diagnosis, cryptosporidiosis. Campylobacter, E. coli, salmonella, oh, salmonella losis. Salmonella losis. Salmonella losis. Salmonella losis. Didn't know you were right. There we are. Well done. <laughs> but beyond that, though, is there's also different sites. So we don't just do like a urine chlamydia gonorrhea. So specifically, they mentioned any mucosal membrane, genital tract, pharynx, or rectum. And as the guy who gives the red eye talk, I must point out that you can also get pink eye from chlamydia or gonorrhea. Interesting. So, so just overall broad strokes. The big things to remember is just hmm. think about different sites and think about different infections. So broaden your diagnosis, broaden. And it's a great little chart here, table one, clinical review. Maybe we'll throw it up on the screen. Really expanding your knowledge on this one. Yeah, I mean, my wife works at the STI clinic at the BC Center. You, for where did you guys control. meet again? At the STI clinic at the <laughs> BC Center. No, I didn't mean that. But I, that's when the time comes for me to have the talk with my kids. That's yeah. how it's going to go. Is it'll say son or daughter. Yeah. Chlamydia yeah. is a reportable illness. So if you ever get chlamydia, your mom's going to know before you do. <laughs> <laughs> and that'll be the talk, more or less. So <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like, come home and you're like, mom texted me today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You heard about it from mom first. Oh, no. Uh, now, That's a great way to just put that conversation on the other half. On the other half, yeah. Mom's going to have to do it. Uh, there was a part two about number one in this journal. Oh my God, part two. Is there going to be a part three? What's number three if there's number one and number two? Number one, know. two. So we're talking about urinary incontinence. Okay. You aren't as potty minded as we are. Um, so this is part two in the July-August edition. And some of you may be aware that part one leaked <laughs> <laughs> earlier in what, June? Who leaked April. It? I believe someone it was someone April leaked it to the media. Amazing. Uh, so how should I treat urinary incontinence UI in older patients with frailty? So bottom line, robust older adults. I'm not sure if there's a robustness scale of older adults. Uh, with urinary incontinence should be treated similarly to younger adults. So the same. Is that what they're saying? That's yeah. it. And uh, the way you answer any of these questions when someone's asking you on the wards, you know, your non-pharmacologic approaches and your pharmacologic approaches. So non-pharmacological, we're going to think about what, you know, maybe diapers. Yeah, diapers is, is an something? option. And, you know, training, maybe, what about fluids? How much fluids? fluid would you recommend So for these in patients? a medical breakthrough, that's oh, right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is going to blow your mind. Concentrate everywhere, yeah. You blow, blow your britches. Your blow, blow your Blow a hole in your diaper. <laughs> uh, if you drink less fluid, yeah? you will leak less urine. What? Bam. No. No uh, way. Throw that 
Do that you? sounds that sounds like an exam question. It totally is. It's it's like the uh, for the person having anaphylaxis to peanuts, the first thing you tell them to do, stop eating, eating peanuts. peanuts. So for so inter- in another interesting thing here though pelvic uh, pelvic floor muscle therapy. So I would have recommended this to my patients after like a traumatic delivery. Maybe they had a pretty big repair, third degree, second degree, even. But even for our male patients. So I've, I've had a couple of patients who've had uh, like prostate surgery or PSA was high, worried about prostate cancer, prostate taken out, and they go for pelvic floor therapy. Yeah. And I've had, it takes, it takes a while, six months, maybe a year, and then you start to see some real benefits. I'd love to see the couch in the pelvic floor therapy room. It's a lot of incontinence accidents. Is there like a, a, a sheet? A diaper everywhere. Plastic sheet. They probably have one of those like floors. Where it's just like see-through, like walking through a grate in New York City or something. The pelvic floor. Just everything drops through, like a <laughs> kind of like a mat. Don't, don't pets? I don't have pets. Don't pets have like a what are they called? Litter boxes? Clearly, neither of us have pets. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You could have that in your office. I mean, we have two fish downstairs. But yeah, there's, yeah. <laughs> there's no issues with urinary <laughs> incontinence there. <laughs> you ever seen a fish diaper? No. No. But that's a good idea. There's a business there. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to other, you're non- finished. <laughs> <laughs> Scale up your. Oh wow! Jokes. You were just on fire. Come on, let's go. I'm like the fish because they're underwater. Uh, <laughs> bladder retraining, another non-pharmacologic approach. Yeah. Um, it, it is a cognitive approach, and uh, they use urgency suppression techniques. Oh, that's interesting. Very interesting. And in those with more advanced frailty, then what do they do? Alternative approaches. And this is a nice way. Of, so this is a great euphemism. Eh? For those in congregate living environments, is that the new word for like a care home? I guess so. I mean, nursing I, home? we used to call it nursing home. Now nursing. we're not allowed to. And then it was care home, but care I guess home. So we congregate stopped, living we environments, caring. measures, <laughs> prompted voiding, timed voiding, and containment may be appropriate. Are what these like activities mean? they do? Like at <laughs> 1 p.m. there's bingo, at 2 p.m. there's <laughs> containment? I don't know. Someone's got... I. I'm not the most intelligent family practitioner, many people have told me. Someone's going to have to tell me what containment in a congregate living environment. That sounds like prison. No kidding. All right. Well, most of my patients are like, just give me the pill, doctor. Okay. So what pill, though? Because there's a number. There's, the number is four. Four. <laughs> Glad you asked. Uh, so we got oxybutynin, solifenacin, we got fezoteridine, and mirabegron. Mirabegron. I've used mirabegron and oxybutynin. Those and your are patients are begging for mirabegron. Ooh. Because it's the most nice. expensive. It's got to be the best, right? Is it? And urethral bulking agents. What is a urethral bulking agent? I, I don't know, but do I'm sure it can be beneficial for, for stress incontinence. It could be older in older women, women with frailty. frailty. That's As reference number 10. I'm going to look that up while you keep, keep on going. That's an interesting one. All right. So the problem with oxybutynin is that it's got a bunch of red flag issues. So folks uh, typically tolerate the newer things you're not listening to me I do, i'm just intrigued <laughs> so reference number 10 now they, they reference a 2000 study in urology injectable agents in the treatment of stress urinary incontinence in women where are we now well we're in 2024 now so <laughs> referencing an article new. from 24 years ago with nothing more recent i'm gonna i'm gonna say they put that in there for peer review and no one picked that up i think so yeah so Older oxybutynin and let's get back to that yeah. one uh, shows adverse cognitive effects I okay. mean, some days I sure. wonder if you're on oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one is solifenacin, which is uh, lower risk of cognitive impairment. Five milligrams a day dose, lower risk for that cognitive impairment, as you mentioned. And fesototerine. Fesototerine? Pes- fesototerine. Yeah. Do you prescribe yeah, that often? Uh, no. No. I think that's going to be urology for me. Safe and vulnerable adults with frailty who may be living in a congregate living environment during containment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. I hope I never there. end up in one of those places. Yeah, it sounds. Oh, and there's implementation. There's a continence product advisor. Now, warning. Org, dot org. Dot org. Continence product advisor. Dot org. Be careful if you're looking up this stuff at home. I have some really weird ads on my Facebook. Oh dear. When I have that. Those targeted ads. Targeted ads after like a day in the clinic. Fifteen different diaper ads on yeah, your screen there. <laughs> weird and then stuff you just you like you think you're like God. I need this. <laughs> then, you, then you go on to Amazon and they've got you. You're like, and then you're like Prime. You're like, there's a discount. I'm going to save money. I'm a child of immigrants. Why I'm going to get I it every toilet? month. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself that? You know, I some people. I all this time potty training my kids. Could be relieving themselves during their podcast. <laughs> and you'd never know.
Um, this last article, you know, I was under the impression that we were going to get no good medical research content from the avocado toast generation. And this article has proven that wrong. That's right. We're talking about avocados in IUD training. Incredible. Now, you know what's the, the most incredible thing here is? Someone is getting avocados for $1.25. That is, that is the, uh, the shocker there. That's, that shows you the, the, the lag time between when you submit yeah, an yeah, article yeah. and when it finally goes to print. Uh, like all Avocado these folks, inflation rates. Yeah. Estimated cost per student for simulation. At, oh, see, they got you there. As of time of submission, yeah. they got you. That's exactly. a good article. Yeah, wow. holy guacamole. That's a good article. <laughs> <laughs> Avocados and IUDs. I can't wait to talk about this one. Taco. Talk okay. about this one. <laughs> hey. So where are we? Where could we possibly be going with this? I mean, avocados as a simulation tool for IUD insertion. So here's the story: is these folks were using the plastic models and putting the IUDs in the plastic model, and they said, "Pretty sure that when I do this in clinic, you don't hear it go click." Yes. They wanted something yeah. to go a bit more like mush or like yeah how or something give something to that it? would simulate uh, endometrial tissue. And they found and now now they haven't referenced this, but the internal texture is consistent with endometrial tissue. So they haven't referenced that. But I'm going to assume with these 74 okay. people, so the 74 residents, in there, I'm just it, look. They they use words like pedagogy and medical education. And you gotta you just you gotta be sure these avocados. And like, how ripe is the avocado? Did they use a ripeness scale? Oh my gosh, you are just, this is not Journal Club. <laughs> I think we're it's, here. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, were they South so, American avocados? No. Or were they Arizona now? Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Did so, you just racialize avocados? I see where, <laughs> the origin of where they come from. Oh, It's okay when you, okay, I'm not going to double down on that. Uh, but I can tell you right now that uh, they made a mess of these and then they taped them back together. I oh, know. So, so what do you actually do? You cut it in half. You take the the pit. Is the pit or the seed out? Yeah. What's the right word? Pit. Mr. Avocado expert. I went uh, to the take, wrong take kind the of medical school out, to know. And then thing. you put it back together. Put some duct tape or on the outside or some medical tape. They even have the caveat. They were so detailed that the tape, the one roll of tape that they reference a the price for, can be used by multiple medical students. Well, there you go. You have to Easy share. Enough. That's another kindergarten rule. Go. We got our climate emergency. Oh, here they salt. do actually say moderately ripe avocado. Okay, there, there you go. So, so they detailed. Had a scale. Wow. Amazing. All of your objections are just being it's thrown. Just torn apart the bus. if I actually read the article. This is Nacho Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it looks more like a Super Bowl party than an actual medical article <laughs> with all this uh, guacamole here. But interesting. I mean, what's next? Let's be honest. We, yeah. Where does this end? Like. Med students, first it's IUDs and avocados. Yeah. Next, it's going to be suturing quesadillas, learning laparoscopy with churros. <laughs> like, where does it end? It ends when you start to have to treat for obesity because everyone's going to eat afterwards. Like, this would be a great, this is. It's a good fat. It's a, it's a good fat. Is it? Is it? <laughs> it's okay. I don't know. That's yeah. amazing. So, somebody uh, said there was a comparable tactile sensation to a cervix and uterus when you okay. put an IUD stick in a avocado. Um, insertion device. Um, I don't know who that was or when that brainwave came. I'm sure there's a story involving a resident retreat somewhere. Yeah. I would love to hear it. Please comment below. But yeah, but incredible. The great photography, great. I just, I just think it's a skill. I mean, I just, just yesterday I had to even simply removing an IUD. You have to, it's like, it's a standard skill now. I think more people with the next plan on and that, but I think, I think this is a, a great service. And if one more person places an IUD, and if one more avocado has to sacrifice itself <laughs> for the say, sake of medical education, I think that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna be getting hearing from the the avocado lobby about the the needless slaughter <laughs> of avocados the, for medical the, research. The most delicious slaughter I've ever seen. Can't wait. You salt it. Wow. Well, I don't think okay. we can top that when it comes to dad so. joke medicine. That was probably the absolute best gift you could have given us. A medical article about <laughs> avocados. avocados. Thank you. Thank you, researchers, for what you've done for Amazing. us. Amazing. I can't wait to see what next fruit or vegetable shows up <laughs> next month on Dad Joke Medicine. I'm Dr. Paul Dillon. I'm Dr. Simon Moore. We'll see you then.